Hello, this is Glenn from uRender and in this video I will show you how uRender performs with the rope simulation tool of Cinema 4D R26. uRender allows you to render in real time. It means that you can get instant feedback while you're working and that you don't need to learn anything new since uRender is fully integrated into Cinema 4D. You stay in your favorite application and render faster. Instead of animating ropes, I did some other funny stuff, so have a look. You can create any type of object from ropes to laces, from spaghetti to worms. So, unleash your creativity and speed up your rendering times. In this scene, I made an hourglass filled with noodles and the animation is done by the rope simulation. The hourglass itself is just made with circles and the loft tool. To prepare the scene for the simulation, I duplicated the glass object made it a bit smaller by adjusting the radius of the circles. This acts as the collider object, so I assigned the collider tag and decreased the friction value. Of course, also the bottom element gets a collider tag, but in this case with a high friction value. For the rope sim, you can use any kind of spline. If you just want to have a line, I like to use the segment object. You can find it in the asset browser. It's a simple spline as well, but with some helpful values like the point count. Use the sweep and end side object to get a mesh and put everything into a cloner. Then assign the rope tag to the segment object. After you've adjusted the cloner settings, just duplicate the cloner and press the C button to convert it. Now you get dozens of cloned objects, but we need to adjust the values on the rope tag or inside object. For this, it's very helpful to use the search bar to easily select the according objects or tags. The only thing I changed in the rope tag is the friction. I decreased it to around 0.1. What's also very important is to check the simulation settings. Hit Ctrl D and have a look at the simulation tab. I increased the sub steps, iterations and collision passes. What's really important here is the complete simulation behavior and so the result can change dramatically. So try to find out the settings that are working for your scene as soon as possible. Always keep that in mind. If you found nice settings, it's also a good idea to cache your simulation so you can jump around in your timeline without any hiccups. For the background, I use the Studio Cove object you can find in our asset library. The rest of the scene is very simple. Just two light sources, one spotlight and one area light for nice reflections. And the rest of lighting is done by the IBL, image-based lighting. Other things I have done in the render settings are a slight amount of bloom and also some color correction in the end. The next scene is this and here I want to show you how simple the material settings can be to create great results. The setup of the simulation is principally done by the same way as shown before. The assets like the bowl and fork can be found in the asset browser. To get this nice shape of worms, just use the scale curve in the sweep object so you can define the rounding of the end and beginning of the worms very easily. Now, let's have a look at the material of the worms. I will deactivate all channels and start with a diffuse channel. It's a simple layer containing two simple gradients. 
The more important one is this one, to get the rings. Just make a simple gradient and then right click and double the knots. You also may need to switch the type to 2D V. To get some color variations I use a simple gradient with turbulence setting. And on top of that I use a colorize shader to get a nice color. The main color is set in the diffuse channel directly and the texture is then multiplied. For the bump map, I copied the ring gradient from the diffuse channel to match the bumps with the diffuse color. For the reflectance, I used a quite low glossiness volume. For the wet slimy glossy look, you just need to activate the clear coat channel and maybe give a bit of influence from the bump map by increasing the blend with base layer value. One of the most important things is subsurface scattering, of course, and you instantly get a super cool warmy effect. Actually, it looks a bit disgusting. But anyway, just set the translucency and surface scattering strength according to the scale of your scene and use a red color. Also keep in mind that the surface scattering blurs out the diffuse channel a little, and this is exactly what we want in this case. It makes no sense to use sheen here for which it's actually intended, but in some cases I like to add just a very slight amount of it, as a kind of look adjustment. Sheen influences the diffuse shading and also how the subsurface scattering looks like. So to sum up, just use very basic gradients for diffuse and bump, add clear coat and SSS and you get probably the fastest and easiest way for an earthworm shader without the need for a single texture. All right, the light setup in this scene is extremely basic and simple as well. Two spotlights, a warm front light, a cold back light, and one of our default HDR environment presets with default values. Also some basic color correction as well and you're ready to go. Okay guys, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our Urender YouTube channel. And I hope you had as much fun as I had creating the scene. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.